Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we will discuss when unmodified opinion is not justified. And specifically, we're going to be looking at gas issues, not gap issue. In the prior session, we looked at gap issue. Now we would look at gas. This topic is typically covered in auditing and attestation course, the CPA exam, the auditing section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I covered, including a lot of CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them. Click on the like button. It doesn't cost you anything. Share them. Subscribe. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. And especially these days, the coronavirus is out there. Students are going online, so they might benefit other people. And please connect with me on Instagram. If you are looking for supplemental, supplemental material for your education, especially for your CPA exam, please check out my website, farhatlectures.com. So we're going to look first at condition for unmodified opinion or unqualified clean opinion. And we talked about those opinion in the prior session, but it's good to remember what we did. We include all the financial statements. We, we obtain sufficient appropriate evidence. The financial statements are presented fairly with, with gap and no circumstances requiring the addition of an emphasis of a matter or modification. So under those circumstances, we give an unmodified or unqualified or clean opinion, whatever you want to call it which is everything is good. Also, if we need an explanatory paragraph, we would still report an unqualified or clean opinion. Now we're going to look at circumstances where unmodified is not justified. Simply put, we cannot give a clean opinion. And, and in the prior session, I told you we could have two issues, two main issues. One could be a gap and one could be a gas issue. Gap, it means the financial statements are not prepared in accordance with gap and the auditor disagree. We already covered this issue in the prior topic. We looked at detailed example about when gap is not in, when we are not in compliance with gap. Now we're going to look at gas. So we have a scope limitation. The scope of the audit has been restricted, which is called scope limitation, or the auditor is not independent. So now we need to talk about gas. Remember under gap, kind of it's good to review what we do, if there is any issue, we could give a qualified, depending on the materiality and the severity of the problem, or we can give adverse. So those were the two opinion we would give if we don't give an unmodified opinion and the issue is gap. Now for gas, I'm going to tell you right now, we might give a qualified, I'm going to tell you right now, or we might give a disclaimer. It's good to see them side by side. So qualified, we could have a gas or a gap issue. However, gap, we use the term adverse for a bad opinion. For gas, we use the term disclaimer, and we're going to see the details of it. So gas, it's either qualified or disclaimer. So when do we give qualify? When do we give the disclaimer? Well, simply put, the issue is deals with evidence. If we are unable to obtain appropriate evidence, by, but the auditor conclude that the possible effect of the material misstatement is material, but not severe or pervasive. So we did not, we could not collect enough evidence that's material, but it's not severe and per pervasive. So material, but not severe and per pervasive. We still had a scope limitation, but if it's not severe and per pervasive, we could give a qualified opinion. So what could be some examples of scope limitation? Just kind of, so you know, what are we talking about here? We're talking about time constraint, okay? For example, we did not have enough time to finish the audit. Well, that's that's a problem. That's a problem. That's that's that, that's an issue. But how, how severe is it? Is it severe or not severe? It's an important, it's material, but depending on the severity of it. We were not able to obtain inventory. Well, that's material, but is that is that severe? Is inventory a large amount? The, were we able to observe some of the inventory and not others, so on and so forth. We are unable to confirm account receivable. That's a material, but is it severe? We were unable to obtain an attorney letter. Those are examples of it. Maybe the accounting record is not adequate, but how bad is it? How bad is it? 
okay is it everywhere or to a specific division specific account Wh what are we talking about here what's the severity of it okay so if it's material all of these are material and what are these these are auditing procedures and they are all material but the question is are they severe or not severe so simply put we are confined or restricted somehow okay now the restriction could be by could be done by circumstances we are constrained by circumstances for example when they counted the inventory we were not there at the beginning of the year so we just had to accept their beginning inventory or we could be restricted by management and this is a problem if management is restricting us basically management is saying you can do it then the auditor just don't sit around and accept they're gonna have to ask somebody higher than management usually the board of directors or more specific the audit committee to comply they ask management to comply and usually they would comply if they don't want a disclaimer because disclaimer is bad now let's switch gears if these examples that i just we just discussed the scope limitations are severe and pervasive they are material but they are also severe and pervasive now we give a disclaimer disclaimer is not good we don't give an adverse remember adverse is gap issue we're not dealing with gap here we are dealing with gas so remember this is a gap issue so basically what does it mean it means we we cannot collect enough evidence and we cannot make a decision as a result so if we look we cannot collect enough evidence and we don't have alternative method we're not comfortable with making a decision we just disclaim we don't say it's adverse we just say we could not collect enough evidence remember disclaimer is for gas adverse is for gap and they're both no good but you need to know which is which because on the exam on the cpa exam they will always try to trick you and telling you it's a gas issue and do you do an adverse no a gas issue is a disclaimer for gap issue you'll give an adverse they're both no good okay now let's look at an example with a disclaimer remember disclaimer is not good like the equivalent of not the equivalent yeah basically the, the equivalent of an adverse for gap and basically what we said is we do not express an opinion on the financial statements of this company because the significance of the matter described in the basis of the, the for the disclaimer of the opinion section of our report we have not been able to obtain sufficient appropriate evidence to provide the basis now if we go back here if we kind of think about appropriate sufficient appropriate evidence remember the four conditions for the clean opinion let's look at the four conditions one of them is sufficient appropriate evidence so if we could not comply with this that's it we cannot give an unmodified opinion now we disclaim hopefully this makes sense kind of tying it back to the clean opinion because the clean opinion require sufficient appropriate evidence and here you're saying I could not collect those appropriate sufficient evidence so basically we, we would still say we are independent and this is the remaining of the report this is one we disclaim also remember we could give a qualified opinion basically a qualified opinion would read something like this in the report in our opinion except for just like with the qualified opinion for gap except for this issue we we are comfortable except with this issue except for the effect of such adjustment if any as might have been determined to be necessary had we been able to examine evidence regarding the foreign affiliates and earning it seems this company have a foreign affiliate and we could not examine the foreign affiliates and their earning otherwise the, the financial statements present fairly here we are giving a qualified opinion so here we we explain it a little bit further we are unable to obtain audited financial statements in supporting the company investment and a foreign affiliate stated at 12 12.5 million and 11.7 for 2018 2017 so on and so forth so we explain the issue so notice except as discussed above we conclude that the audit in accordance with the standard of the PCAOB so this is a public company so this is basically a qualified example of a qualified opinion now remember we also sometimes we, we we may not be independent if we were not independent we disclaim so let's take a look at the conditions if the auditor is not independent as specified by the AICPA code of professional conduct which we talked about we'll talk about this later on simply put if we are not independent we have some type of a vested interest direct or indirect with the client but we are required by law to issue a report a disclaimer of opinion is required under those circumstances so once you are not independent you simply disclaim you simply disclaim you may not you may you might have performed all the auditing procedures and you're comfortable with them you disclaim you disclaim okay the lack of independent also override any scope limitation any scope limitation it doesn't matter you would still you know it's a disclaimer okay there's therefore no other reason for disclaiming opinion should be cited you don't you don't just you don't you know just say i'm not independent that's it that's good enough you just say i'm not independent and you move out 
okay? There should be no mention in the report on the performance of any audit procedures. You might have went through the audit, but you find out later that you are not independent. You don't say anything. You don't say, I went, you know, I did the audit and it looks good, but I'm not independent. You don't just don't say anything. Basically, you would say, here we go. We are not independent with respect to this company and we do not express an opinion on them. So you don't say anything more than that. So it's easy. It's a short report. I'm not independent. I can't say anything. Although I might have did some uh, auditing procedure, I'm comfortable with them, but I don't say anything. So this is basically disclaimer. Also, this is a gas issue. Now, in the next session, what I will do, what I will do is I will try to sum summarize the various audit opinion, and this way, kind of put all the picture together. As always, I would like to remind you, if you like the recording, please click on the like button, subscribe, visit my website for additional for additional resources. Studying for your CPA exam is a 20 to 30 year, if not 40 year investment in your career. Take it seriously, stay motivated, and be safe. Good luck.